anxiety. We all feel it and we feel it, don't we? Um, anxiety is not just a concept, it's a very serious, serious, serious subject. Um, let me speak to you about anxiety for a few minutes. Um, number one, anxiety is an epidemic. Uh, it's something that almost every human being that's ever lived has faced. Um, it's, 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 it's transcendent. So, to be human is to be anxious or to feel anxiety. It's very, very normal. Anxiety is, um, it's very interesting um, because it is both what I might say is inherent, but it's also um, relational in terms of choice. Um, in the Bible it says, be anxious for nothing. Philippians 4, 6. Be anxious for nothing. Hmm. Jesus told his disciples often, do not be anxious. He told them, you're going to have a lot of causes to be anxious, but don't be anxious. Um, I think someone has said that the term fear not, which is almost an equivalent of anxiety, anxiety and fear are sometimes very synonymous in their function, is used 300 plus times in the Bible. Um, God's very conscious that there's a lot of things that cause anxiety in our lives. Um, but it's strange, isn't it? Because it, it almost feels like anxiety is something that comes very naturally, like you don't have to promote it. Like you're not making a choice to be anxious, you're just being anxious. But then you're confronted with the reality where God says, don't be anxious. So we have to wrestle with those tensions, right? That there's something about what we're experiencing, what's confronting us, how we're processing, what the past is informing us of, that causes the anxiety, but at the same time, God seems to tell us that we have some type of choice with this. Now I know some of you are going to disagree with this because you just believe there are certain things in life that come upon humans which they have no control over whatsoever and all you can do is respond to it. You can't really ever see it changed or transformed or to that point see it uh, degraded or de-emphasize your life or be transformed so that it's not a, as big a problem as it was. Obviously, you know where I stand. I believe that part of anxiety is a choice. I believe anxiety ultimately, the sinful, the harmful, the destructive type of anxiety, the preoccupation with anxiety that neutralizes us, paralyzes us, freaks us out, gets us to not trust God, not trust people, immobilizes us, um, strips us of all of our capabilities and wonderful gifts that God has given to us. That type of anxiety ultimately is a cause from our fallibility, our fallenness, our sinfulness, our brokenness. But God can redeem us from that. There's hope in that. But we have to admit first that we're anxious. And we have to admit first that some of our anxiety, it ain't good. It's destructive. And, uh, you know, I think there's a lot of pharmaceutical companies, a lot of doctors, well-intended, that recognize that anxiety is an issue and they're trying to treat it. And they treat it with medicines. And I'm not absolutely against all that. Um, but I do think that it's good to uh, do some psychological archaeology and start to ask ourselves some tough questions of why are we anxious? Why are we really anxious? Anxiety is a beast. It's not going anywhere. It's a big deal. Um, I do believe that at some point anxiety becomes a choice. Not a choice as to whether it's present or not, but a choice to how you're going to respond to it and what amount of control you will give to it. I do believe that. And um, I do believe that sometimes the very fight with anxiety is a war. It's not something that's simple. It's not something you can just do. It's something that's, it's a war. It's the best, best way to, it's, it's not easy. It's, it's just tough. It's real. Um, a lot of things we're anxious about, 
never come to pass. Statistically, if you go on Google and research this, the majority of things that we get anxious about never actually happen. Did you know that? Just even think about your own life. Make a list of 10 things you've been anxious about and for most of us, you go, man, that, that, that stuff never really happened. I was just scared. It's kind of how it is. Very few things actually that we get super anxious about actually transpire. Anxiety is often the, the feeling of I'm no longer in control and I don't know what's going to happen and I feel my sense, my, myself in a sense of a uh, place of harm. I might be harmed. Um, God cares about our anxiety and um, He understands and He's patient and He's forgiven and He's merciful and He's gracious and He's empowering. Um, I don't think it's God's will for us to live a life where we are enslaved to our anxiety. I don't think that's God's will because it's so crippling. Um, so whatever we need to do to begin to take steps to move in those directions would be good. Um, we happen to be talking about this in a season that that is pretty high on anxiety. If you think about the calendar year, I don't know that a lot of people are overly anxious during the summer, unless you live in hot places, you can't stand the heat, or maybe you know hurricanes go whatever. But holidays. There's a lot of anxiety. Weather, travel plans, family, you get around Christmas, gifts, money, resources. Eh. We should think and be mindful um, and just be sensitive to the fact that um, maybe we need to exercise a little bit more self-control and it's a little bit more self-awareness. And I'll leave you with that. Some of us are just more prone to anxiety and it might not be a bad thing to know that about yourself and to know what you're exactly prone to in terms of anxiety. Um, hope these thoughts help you. I hope you're encouraged and I hope we're able to embrace the fact that anxiety is transcendent, it's something we all face, but that God's for us and uh, that he's with us and he's able to help us. Peace and blessings.